here to talk a little bit about Fedora 12, uh, which is coming out in November right. and uh, has an enormous slew of features that uh, I think is probably one of our most feature-packed releases we've ever had. It's right up there with, with 11, which I think... Uh, it seems like we say that every time, which is good. It is. It is good. And, and it seems to be continually increasing. So you know, I think that shows the, the, the power of the model, right, um, that, that developers have a way to get their bits in front of a large audience of eager people right, who are ready to consume them, try them out, file bugs, uh, and those get communicated directly back upstream so the upstream can actually fix them and then move them out into the larger open source world, which is precisely the way we like it. Um, we have better mobile broadband support now in Network Manager, a developer by the name of Dan Williams. Uh, who's one of the key maintainers of, of Network Manager, has added mobile broadband support to the, the point where if you've got a, a, a phone or a, uh, an Evdo card, you know, your, your ability to get on the internet instantly is, it's just dead simple. You simply tell it your provider uh, and it finds your phone and gets you online. And uh, we also have things like Bluetooth, uh, uh, Bluetooth tethering is, uh, is much, much better in Fedora 12. Um, I've been able to tether to my Bluetooth phone. And again, it's almost instantaneous. You, you bond your phone to your, uh, to your Fedora laptop, and then you get a, a new interface and network manager. You select it, and you're online. It's that easy, just like a wireless or a, or a wired interface. Yeah, one thing I love about the feature process, which, means, which is why we have more features, is because it's people taking accountability. They're not just shoving some software out there, hoping they're putting it forward and creating a, a little bit of a marketing plan around it. They're making sure there's documentation, release notes, just taking it seriously in a degree, a way that people may not have otherwise had to before or wanted to. Right, right. And, uh, you know, we have a, a great process for that. There's a community marketing team, actually, that uh, Mel Chua right now is, is sort of helping to, to lead in the uh, community sphere, and that's all done openly and transparently, and we develop uh, things like the talking points, and why don't you talk a little bit about that, Mel, about what you've been doing. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do in marketing right now is to build our capacity to actually do marketing um, and hopefully eventually be able to hand that off to a community of actual marketing people with marketing experience because, you know, right now it's uh, a bunch of really excited, really talented people and we're sort of learning marketing as we go along and we're starting to pick up folks from the community that have marketing backgrounds, have marketing out their day job, and it's really great to us see things like marketing research start up instead of, you know, simply putting out deliverables like talking points and future profiles, which are still really important. And, it, and, it, and it's yet another example of coming back to first principles of Fedora, and one of the first things you ever said to me when I started working on Fedora was there's a difference between capacity building and actually doing stuff, right? And over and over again, the teams and the subsections within Fedora, but it's greater than Fedora. We see it in anything, you know, any project that gets pursued by Red Hat or by any upstream or whatever, right? The place where the, the, the leaders are spending most of their time enabling others is more successful and grows faster than the place where you get two or three people who try to do it all by themselves. Absolutely, I mean, because the, then you're sort of locking the knowledge in, it becomes institutionalized. It's all of the things that we find cause problems in uh, uh, in sort of legacy environments, right? And the whole idea of open source is getting knowledge out of that and allowing other people to build on it, right? So we have to live by those principles too. And the, far the farther we move away from our engineering roots as well, the more able we are to demonstrate the capacity to do this stuff beyond just engineering in new, new disciplines where you don't actually uh, see that happen a lot. You know, you're, you're not seeing a lot of really effective marketing that is being driven completely by a, a community of participants. Well, I think you could also, you know, you could also look at uh, the documentation team, right, and what they're doing nowadays. It's a, another collateral team that has more participation now than ever before. They've got more effective tools. Um, they're using tools that are well maintained so that people can build a really broad corpus of knowledge. And not only that, but you know, this time we had a, a big step forward, right, in our, oh, yeah. our licensing. Um, thanks, for, thank you, because I really, I realized I did really want to talk about that one today, because um, we're, we're migrating the 
the Fedora content from the from an older legacy license that is essentially uh, served its purpose. I lived its life to the to the Creative Commons um, by SA 3.0 and ported, which is aside from being a pretty useful license and having a stronger legal footing, it's also the large continent of what everyone else is using. So instead of being on this little island by ourselves with a license that was good enough, we're now joining this whole world of content where people will be able to grab our stuff to reuse it and we can, and we can pull in other things. And that means I can start pulling in images from Wikimedia and all that sort of thing. What, is, what does by SA mean? It's stating who exactly is, it's, it's an attribution clause. It's basically saying we're going, to, we're going to release this out there. When you continue to repeat it after, to continue to distribute it after that, you have to give attribution back to where it came from, to the project where it came from or the individuals that contributed to it. And the SA is the share alike, which means that you have to share it in perpetuity. So this is, so this is roughly the equivalent of the GPL for the content world, making free content, making it free enough that um, that it can be reused and redistributed by the people. So in other words, right in line with free now and free always, right. which is sort of a fedora mantra. Once free, free always free, free, I believe. Oh, is there you go. One. You're still, You're still learning. learning. It's okay. I, I know, I know. I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. I, I look to you. And so, and to be clear, the, the license that was there before was good enough, but there was a better license, and, the, and it provided us a lot of advantages by moving to the better license. So we've talked a lot about Fedora the project. Do you want to say any more about Fedora 12? The Fedora 12, the distribution. Yeah, I, I think we should. I think we should. I'm running uh, the pre-Fedora 12 beta on my not on my laptop, but my brand new uh, Dell workstation at home that I literally just got delivered a month ago is running Rawhide as well, and everything is working beautifully. So uh, all the the technology bets that we've been laying over the course of a few cycles now, including things like kernel mode setting, where you can get this nice graphical boot up that fades into a login screen, right? A lot of those things are starting to, yeah, it's very fast. It cuts a huge amount of boot time off, and it's also attractive. It's a nice experience, and those things are starting to work for more cards than ever now, right? We still got a ways to go. Not everything is fully complete, but one of the mantles that we take on as Fedora, I think, is doing the heavy lifting, right? Making these things work, and then pushing them out into upstream for the betterment of open source everywhere. Some of the other things that we've improved, uh, Package Kit now offers the ability to install packages to support commands that you don't have. So if you are one of the people who operates in a shell uh, a lot of the time, and of course we have a lot of very technical users, and sometimes they'll drop down to a shell to run a command line, and they may be following an example that they've read in a book. And I think this is probably the case with, with new users too, right? They're learning something, and they open up a terminal and try it. And if they don't have that command installed, they get you know, command not found, and then they have to figure out where did this command come from? What package do I need to install to get this to get this command? Well, with this plugin, uh, that works magically. They type the command, they still get a, a message telling the command wasn't found, but package kit will install this package for you, which provides that command. Would you like to do that? Yes. Then you run the command and everything works. And this is one of these things that uh, free software is really good at, right? This was always the potential of the kind of thing that free software could do, but this is something that you, you're not going to get in the proprietary software world. You know, you're not going to try to pull something up and it's going to say, you, you know, it would, I'm sure that they would love to say, it looks like you're trying to find a spreadsheet. Would you like to pay us money now? But with us, you just, you know, uh, clicky, clicky, oh, we think you want a spreadsheet, so we're going to go get open office. Uh, you know, that's awesome. You know, it's one of these things that we talk about. Well, but I mean, experiencing that is highly awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that is, it's just so easy uh, in the free software world. I mean, I remember saying to Max directly, you know, in, in one of our interviews, this, these, these other vendors are in, they're in the business of trying to sell you more things. Their platform is just a means to sort of shoehorn you into the uh, you know into the pen and, and uh, you know you pay with all the other sheep and you know this this free software desktop that we're providing is it's a, a much wider horizon for you to explore and you can do it all without being shackled to anything right you can try this package and you can try that package and we're, we're in the business of giving all those choices away so it's really up to you what you do with them.